All right, well, this is going to be uh, Coffee with Earl with uh, Shit Soils. Shit Soils, hello, how are you? How about some coffee? Oh, that's good. It's right at the perfect temperature. Uh, so Shit Soils, I'll answer uh, a couple of your questions that you asked, um, and then I'll answer the rest of them in uh, the description. But... Uh, First of all, let me say how hilarious you guys are that uh, that uh, alcohol as a religion of like I'm moved by the spirits and I'm having an out of body experience it was so funny. I was like clutching my face, uh, laughing so hard, hoping I wouldn't hurt something, dislocate a laugh muscle. Oh, so um, I think that I'll do uh, like work and religion um, and uh, something else if it pops up. But uh, I can't say exactly where I work. Uh, I work for a multinational, and uh, it's on, it was on purpose. Um, so like I, I chose that job not because it's like something I've always wanted to do or um, that kind of thing, but uh, um, because I felt it was the most likely to survive an uh, economic downturn. Because uh, for the longest time, I was a bike messenger, and I was intimately connected to the, uh, the health of businesses uh, in the city of Portland. Uh, Portland, Oregon is where I live, and uh, I watched everybody um, start to pare down. Like I was watching jobs get lost left, right, and center, um, especially like service jobs. Uh, I was like tons of receptionists were getting let go, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I, I watched a lot of people hold on to the very end, and uh, was, well, essentially what that did was like you know draw drew away their resources um, until. Uh, they are almost desperately looking for another job, and so I saw that happening, and I, I watched um, my own uh, company start to dwindle. Um, just people weren't sending as much stuff, um, or they'd send their own people to go get it. Like this thing, there was less less business. So like someone, I had like a bunch of uh, bankers boxes to pick up uh, at a printing company. They just send somebody from their mailroom because their mailroom people were answering phones. They're like, uh, you know, take a hand truck and make six, seven trips if you have to. Um, it was cheaper than having a car make one trip. Or maybe not cheaper. Maybe they, you know, they that was it was more efficient because they didn't have as much to do. So, um, so I left that job. Um, I bought my van. You asked about my vehicle. I have that Toyota Corolla. I mean, uh, no, I have a Toyota Previa. Um, and the reason I bought that is because it looks like a soccer mom mobile, and I could live in it. Um, so I anticipated having the economy be so dodgy for me that I might not, you know, be able to pay rent. I didn't want that to happen. So I got a whole bunch of temp jobs doing like uh, security and uh, independent contract work for uh, event uh, staffing. And I turn, I actually, I turned out to make a lot of money at it. Um, you know, I'm presentable, I'm reasonably intelligent, and uh, when things go wrong, um, I could, I could. I tend to th I tend to think of a way to make it right, so uh, I turned out to be uh, I turned out to be valuable to them, and so thus I had plenty of work. But I didn't that didn't give me the confidence to go out and rent a place. So I still lived in my van. Um, but I was always looking. I always had my eyes out. Uh, what I was looking for was uh, like a multinational, like some sort of big corporation um, that wasn't uh, dependent of more dependent on the more of the global economy than a local economy. Um, and the bigger the company, the more likely there are going to be to have uh, entry-level positions um, and branches in other places. So if, like, if a certain uh, if a local economy really was tanking, um, I'd just be able to transfer to a place where it was expanding. So, um, so I got lucky. I, I, found, uh, I found a really good one, and uh, um, I've been there six years now. And uh, I've finally been able to move part-time, and so my... my, my pay level has gone up and I'm able to lower my hours so I pretty much make I make good money and uh, I'm it but I'm able to like work half as much and make what I made when I first started so uh, so I'm working half as much making the same amount of money so that's nice because what we'll move into religion now because what I believe is what uh, we're here for is uh, to live a simple life of enjoyment um, and for that, we don't need money, and we don't need things. What we need is free time. And we need to be masters of our time as much as possible. 
Um, I don't think you could be happy having a master. So like that part of it, we'll go jump back to work really fast. So part of getting into a big corporation is I looked around for um, those little niche jobs, those little jobs in the cracks where uh, as long as you do your work, um, uh, follow policy, uh, you know, there's no reason for them to come interact with you. So, um, so I do have a master. It just doesn't feel like it because there's not a lot of opportunity or reason for him to come and uh, exercise authority or, uh, or manage me. Um, yeah, so kind of like, you know, Buddhism, a uh, uh, Buddhist stoic um, with my focus on calmness and uh, enjoyment, uh, simple enjoyment. So I'm tired. I'm tired from my job. I'm mentally tired from my job because um, uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, you know, life's not fair, right? <laughs> so, but sometimes it, it strikes me uh, with extra force. And uh, I wish I wish I was on a farm. I wish I was on a farm. Uh, uh, absolutely, my own boss. Uh, just only making enough to survive. Um, that seems just fine to me. But you know, that might just be uh, might just be wishful thinking, magical thinking. You know, like how do I know that it's going any better or any different than what I do right now? Hmm. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a gun story. I own. I own. Uh, so I have three cars. I have three vehicles. I have the van, uh, and I have two motorbikes, an 1100 uh, Honda and a 49cc Derby, um, and I have three guns, um, a shotgun uh, for deer hunting, um, a uh, AR-7 and AR-15, and I was, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, like, some people don't like guns, um, but I've had experiences with guns that were very similar to experiences I had with yoga. Um, you get very in touch with your breathing, you become very, very focused, but in also a way that, like, it's a very wakeful sleepiness. Um, you're, uh, you're trying to work a tool, uh, you're trying to work your body, and, uh, and then the, how good you are at it uh, shows up on the target. Uh, how calm and relaxed and focused you are shows up on the target. And uh, I was shooting tons of rounds downrange, I had an instructor with me. And eventually I just kind of got, I felt a connection. I, I felt, actually, some part of me felt like it was touching the target. And uh, it was my, uh, my first shot, and my first shot was pretty, pretty centered. And my second shot, I felt the connection. And uh, the guy uh, with the range glasses says, uh, you missed the target completely. It was a big target, too. Uh, and I'm like, I don't feel that I did. It wasn't like I didn't, I didn't see it. You know, it was one of those things, but like I felt it. And so the guy's a pro. He's like, you know, he relooked and said, I think we should go examine the target. And so it was at 50 yards. And uh, what I'd done is I'd shot the bullet hole. So I'd put uh, two bullets through the same hole. Um, and, you know, you, you could see the, the slight, the, the, the slight double ring, like owl's eyes. And he said, uh, actually, when, after, then I continued to shoot. Um, and he says, well, you're pretty good at 100 yards, and I'd say at 50 yards. People better keep their head down. Uh, so yeah, at 50 yards, uh, I was uh, I was drilling it. And I was drilling the holes. Um, yeah, I like it. I like some shooting. Um, all right. So that's the questions I'll answer right now. Um, I'll answer the rest in the description. And uh, thanks for having coffee with me, shit soils. See you in the tubes. I'll throw in my favorite malt liquor. Do, do, do.